<laughs> hey, you guys are the smart ones. Actually, attending class is an excellent step towards passing that class. So, no questions? You doing all right? Uh, you guys are like, well, no, Jeff, they don't mean the same thing. I have to assume. Oh, yeah. You know what they say about making assumptions? It makes an ass out of you and umption. Um, okay. If there's no questions, you're good. Okay. I live off of questions. my systems. and then I attack the letters. Yeah. So the numbers would just become six. Yeah. Why do you think somebody might tell me 30? Exactly, because they get they forget that it's powers that I subtract when I divide. I don't suddenly change division into subtraction. So then how many X's are left in where? X the three in the bottom. Yeah, there's three in the bottom. And how many Y's are left? Oh yeah, so they, they have a few that look something like this here. So you can't just go killing the 2T and the 3R, right? Because they're part of the subtraction problem. But these look like something wants to cancel. The problem is the 3R on the top is negative. Well, on the bottom, it's positive, right? You with me? So give one of each. So what would you do if it was this? Um, R? What would you do if it was this? Oh yeah, you're the trick. Yeah. What would you do there? You can't divide anything yet. You got subtractions in there. What would you do? Yeah, yeah. Factor the top. Take a two out. Because what do you? What do you? Why would you do that? Because what's left in here? You're trying to find something on the top that's also on the bottom, or vice versa, right? So in fact, taking a 2 out, that wants to be a 2T, it's just double 2T. That's just double 3R, so take a 2 out. That's just negative of that. That's just negative of that, so I take a negative out. It's the same idea, right? Negative 1 is a coefficient in front of what? If I take a negative 1 out, what does this become? The negative 3R becomes positive, positive 3R. And the positive 2T becomes negative, negative. negative 2T. So 
just like there, I'd be able to do that. Here, I'm able to do the same thing. So when the numbers are almost the same like that, here it's a little easier to tell something's got to be done because four is not two. They're not the same, so you take it two out. It's no big deal. But here they already sort of are the same. So it might just be a negative one you got to take out. Yeah. I like it. Uh, same way. Yeah. Yeah, once you see that, you see how this is the same problem here. Uh, A minus B over B minus A. Same. Uh, 2W plus, yeah, plus minus 7Y over 7Y mi minus 2W. Same. Same problem. They're all the same problem. Yes? Yes. So, uh, uh, so you, when you roll a die, it's a, it's a probability, just, prob just basic probability. Uh, if there's 15 people in here and, and three people in here have been to Romania, what's the probability I would pick somebody who's been to Romania? Three out of 15. It's just making the percentage, right? So. You guys with me? And you guys are like, what's Romania? Got no, it's just a, a situation. Uh, so when you roll a die, if each number has an equal chance of appearing, what's the probability that a two or a four? So when you roll a die, what's the probability that a four is going to show up? One out, of six. One out of six. Now I'm also allowing a two would work for me also. So then, what is that? How many things match what I'm looking for? If I want a two or a four, how many things match what I'm looking for? Two sides match what I'm looking for out of six. So it's just two over six. Yeah, so they're just trying to give you a situation where ratios are the whole idea, and that's probability is all about ratios. I like it. Yes, sir? Is two out of six the same as 30.33? Yeah, two out of six reduces to one out of three. So you can reduce percentages. To yeah, you could reduce fractions. Ratios. But if you did two divided by six in your calculator? It would be 0.333 forever, right? So if you have a two point, or you have a two out of ten chance, that's that's twenty percent chance, and that's a one out of five chance, which is still twenty percent. Yeah. So when I reduce a fraction, I don't change the number. I just change the way this thing looks. Uh, well, this is reducing. And this is converting from fraction to decimal. I like it. But either way, both of these are 0.33 repeating, right? Both of those are. That's why mathematically I can write this, and it means the same thing as this, because they both come out to be the same decimal. They're both the same number. All right. So anything else from homework? You guys look expectantly at me. All right. Um, so let's get back into chapter 8. Uh, let's see, let's do this. Let's see if I got some good. This is normally is one of the things that confuses people the most. So if you have the yellow book, it's on page 204. Yeah. 
it's this guy, but let's start with this guy here. What would the domain be for this? One, two, three, Yeah, because domain is a collection of all the X values or inputs that I can use. So this is really, really in my face. If what inputs does it use? And I'm going to write it as a set. One, two, three, four, five. And what about the range? Why wouldn't I do this? By way? I'm sorry, real quick. Why? Don't even write this. Do not even write this. Do not. Hey, guess what? Don't write that. Why is that wrong? No, it's not a point. Yeah, it's the x's, one through five, right? I really want the guys, yes. Say again? Integers. The answer should only be integers, and what does this include? Everything. This is everything from one to five. That's what this notation is for. This means also 2.794433877777 works. It, does that work? Shit, no. Does it? What's the only things this thing uses? One, two. So when you have finite numbers, not an infinite number of numbers, that's what this is for. This is when I connect with a line. What would this look like if I graphed it? Just a bunch of separate points. I'm not including every single number in between. So this notation is when I want every number between two given numbers. I can't use that here because I only want one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. So to use the bracket, it would have to be like points graphed in a straight line, basically? No, for example, uh, well, let's do number three real quick. Let me, let me compare this with number three. Well, real we'll quick, on this one, what's the range for this one? Negative three, negative one. Negative three, negative one. One, three, three five. five. Okay, so for the same reason, you wouldn't write negative three to five in interval notation, because interval notation takes every number between two things. I don't want every number between negative 3 and 5, I just want those. In comparison, this guy, is it a collection of finite points? No. No, it's a line, it goes through every damn point. How many points are on this segment? How many points are on here? Infinite. Infinite, good, not two, just because they put two dots. There's an infinite number of points. In fact, how many are from here to here? Infinite, infinite number, that's a little freaky. Between any two real numbers you can think of, there's an infinite number of numbers. Holy shit. All right, sorry, it's a little early for that. So my domain, so I do want to write these in what notation? Do I want to write this the same way as this? No. I want to write this in interval notation, because then it includes everything. So what's the lowest that the domain would start at? Let me zoom in on this a little bit. You don't have the book. Yeah, I got you. So negative four up to four. Careful, four is on the what axis? The y axis. Domain is all about x's. So what's the lowest x that goes somewhere? Negative four. What's the highest x that goes somewhere? One. But that's I understand why you said four. Your brain just goes, well, it goes up to four, man. What the hell? Domain is all about x's. In fact, domain doesn't give a shit what the outputs are. It just says one has an output. I don't care where it is. And that's the highest x that has an output. The range only cares about the outputs. What's the lowest output I see? Negative 5 up to 4. That's the highest output I see. That's why I said domain is all about the x-axis. Range is all about the y and it's all about the y's. Right? Let me stop there for a second. So that's something that didn't come up yesterday, is the distinction between using this notation, which just means separate numbers, they're not connected, versus interval notation, which means every damn number between negative four and one. Okay, cool, I like it. So what did I skip here? Number two is, it, is even a different notation. It looks like lungs or something. Uh, but you guys understand how this is really just like D, R, that, this, in a weirder way? The arrows are now these little lines. So why do I know this is a function? All of these are functions. Why do I know this is a function? Yeah, one only goes to zero and so forth. No, none of these go to more than one of these. 
So this is kind of silly when they ask me to list the domain. They sort of already did. Right? What's the domain? One, two, three, four. And what's the range? Zero, two, four. I mean, that's beautiful when they give it to me like that. They've already given me the answer. Kick ass. Okay. So then number four, do that one real quick. Let's see what you guys think. Pay attention to the arrow. Of course, I make you do the hardest one on your own, but, you know, that's what they teach you at math teacher school. <laughs> Give the hardest book. Again, big hint, the arrow. What does the arrow mean? So don't, don't, don't freak out if you get this one wrong. This is, we haven't seen one like this yet. So let me ask you this, what does that arrow mean? Definitely. It keeps going forever. So, is it going up? Huh. Is it, sure. I mean, going back, looking backwards, yeah. looking backwards, this is going up. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I know we should look at it like this, it's going down this way, but looking backwards, because everything's about that direction, right? So it is going up. Yes. So is there any, for, look at the range first. Is there any Y value that it won't no. get to? No. Right, if you think there is, you just keep following it. It's, it's going to rise forever. Infinite to zero. Yeah, and what's the smallest output? So look at the range right now. I think the range is easier to start. Zero. zero is the smallest output up to infinity. 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 Like, so when it's got an arrow on it, there's going to be infinity somewhere. Yes, ma'am? Why is it zero? I thought it was two. No, 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 so look at the range. Wait, for the domain or for the range? Looking at the range. Sorry, I don't know. I just happened to start with the range. I don't know why. So the smallest output is zero. Okay. Right? The smallest y value is zero. And what's the biggest y value? There is no biggest y value. So what would that look like then? It would start at zero. Zero. Oh. Why zero? But it's going down. That way. What's happening? You always go smallest, yeah. comma, Biggest, always. But isn't that smaller numbers? Oh, yeah, no. they're bigger than that. Range is talking about which axis? Y. Y. Oh. Y axis. My bad. I'm going up on the Y axis. <laughs> so where's the Y? This here. It's right there, right? Yeah. So as this Sorry. goes backwards, these go up forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it. It's a good question. It's because you got to train your brain to look at this right. Yeah. You gotta always change your focus. So the range just cares about what y values are used. The smallest y value to the biggest y value. So how do I write this exactly? Infinite, negative infinite. The Careful, it's, it's infinity sign. Is it going to negative infinity? No, it's no. going to positive. 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 positive infinity. And then what do I put here? Yeah. Always a parenthesis because if you put a bracket, that means you can get to infinity. Yeah, yeah, and if you can do that, you got to let me know. i got to see that shit. No, right, what does that look like? Please. Look, I picked up infinity. I want to see that. Yes, sir. Why start with a bracket? Is there an input that has an output of zero? Yes. So I include zero. I can never include it. When do I get to infinity? Never. That's the idea of infinity. You never get there. All right, what about domain? Let's we'll start with that. What's the biggest x value? Two. Two. So that's going to go over here. And it's inclusive because it's included. What's the smallest? Negative infinity. I love it. And never include any kind of infinity. Yeah, that arrow means there's going to be infinities because it's not restrained in that direction, right? So this one 
it's captured. I can see the whole thing. There can't be any infinities here because I can't see infinity. This means, oh shit, it's going to keep going forever. Oh shit, uh, it's infinity. I like it too. Maybe. All right, all right, all right. And real quick, uh, this one's really kind of evil. Let me see if you guys... Look at all these functions. It says determine the domain. And again, domain means what? Uh, X values that we're allowed to use, right? The function actually can use. Uh, so which ones of these... Are there certain numbers you probably can't plug in? One of them should be very obvious. Seven. Yeah, number seven, what can you not plug into a square root? We haven't really gotten the roots yet. That's why I said it was a little evil to put it here. But what do we know? You should know you can't take square root of what kind of number? Prime. No, no, no. You can take square root of a prime. Don't, don't, I don't mean like what's the square root of two? I don't know, so then you can't take it. No, square root of two is 1.414, blah, 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 blah. Just don't, don't, not because it's ugly, but because there is no real answer. You can't take a square root of a negative. Right, what's the square root of 4? Why? Because 2 times 2 is 4. What's the square root of negative 4? It has to be a number multiplied by itself is negative 4. Ain't no way. 2 times 2 is 4. Shit. Negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. Shit. <laughs> so you cannot take a square root of a negative number. So the domain for that would be... No negative numbers. So what's the smallest thing you can take a square root of? What? Uh, two. Zero? Zero. Good. Zero. Square root of zero is what? Zero. Zero. zero because zero times zero is zero. zero. So I can start at zero. And is there a biggest number I can take a square root of? Infinity. Yeah, you can keep going forever. I like it. So that one has restrictions because of the square root sign. It can't handle negatives. What else has restrictions? What else can't handle something? What, which one of these other ones? Five, six, eight, which one? Six. Six, obviously, right? Because yeah. it's got a bottom. So seven has a radical. So that's going to have problems. Six has a bottom. That's going to have problems. Five and eight, do they have either one of those? Is there any number you're not allowed to square? No, no you can square any damn number you want to, right? Is there any number you're not allowed to multiply by ten? No. No. No, so five, five, and eight. Have, what's the domain of five and eight? Since there's no x's I have to throw out, all real numbers. Good, so both five and eight. You can just write all real numbers, but realize another way to write that is negative infinity to infinity. That's everything, right? So number eight, same thing, all real numbers. So what's up at number six? It's all real numbers except negative one. Negative one. Negative one. That's the only thing that makes this undefined. Yeah. So you say all reals except all negative one. I like that. You like the word reals? Okay. For reals. I like it. We feel like that. I'm trying to get you ready because in the next level of algebra, you're going to deal with more functions, and certain functions have problems, and so their domain won't be everything. But if the function has no problems, there's no bottoms, there's no radicals, no problems, all real numbers. Same thing here. I can square anything I want to, no, no problems, all real numbers. The minute it has a problem spot, square roots can't handle certain things, fractions can't have certain things happen, the domain is going to be less. So if you guys can remember how to do number nine here.
So just make sure we kind of think about this the right way. On part A, what is the negative 1? X. There you go. Because it's f of x is what it is in general, right? It's taking the place of y, right? So what that really is asking you is when the input is negative 1, what's the output? Exactly. Good. So keep going if you haven't finished it. I'm going to keep it frozen a little bit too long. So let's try this next one. F of negative 2. So negative 2 is the x value. So there's negative 2 on the x-axis. Look where they put the point, and it tells you what the output must have been. So the output must have been negative 2, because that's where they put the point. When I plug a point in, and I get an output, that's a point, and then I can plot it. They already plotted the point. I can see what they got. For an input of negative 2, they got an output of negative 2. They just happen to be the same number. Who cares? So what about... When 5 is the input, they must have got a 0 out because they didn't go anywhere. That's the point 5, comma 0. So when x is 5, y is 0. Cool. So let me catch up on that. Unfreeze. Whoa. Whoa. All right. So f of negative 2 was negative 2. f of 5, 0. Because this goes through the point negative 1, 2. So you can just find the point that's got negative 1 as an x piece. This goes through the point negative 2, negative 2. This goes through the point 5, 0. So you can find the point and then answer the question. So this is the same question, they just give me the output. So what input has an output in negative 3? 1, 1. Here, there's an output in negative 3, right? What? What's up? So this is asking you this. This is really asking you this. I don't know the x piece, but I know the output is negative 3. Oh. So what point does this go through that has a negative 3 there? Got it. This point. Right. 1, negative 3. Okay. So what, it, what's the x value? 1, 1. 1. So I when x is 1, the output is negative 3. I don't know. I read that as f of x is negative 3. But oh, they're not defining the function. They're okay. saying at what x value will it be. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I like it. Okay, cool. So that's just getting a little deeper into what we got into last time. Uh, this is the same kind of question again, right? So we're not going to do it. Same exact stuff. Uh, blah, blah, blah. I don't worry about that too much. That's crap. Okay. Uh, excuse me, let me take the numbers because I have different. Oh, yeah. I guess they just added one more, yeah. Sure. What is, uh, on this problem, let me add something. What is f of 3? Be okay. real mean for a minute. 1. Oh, yeah. 0. 0.859. Is there any there? No. Oh. So it's undefined. Okay. Oh, it's right. evil, Jeff. Yeah. Evil. Where is this function defined? So that's what's the domain of this function? Negative four up to one. One. So any questions outside of that, it's undefined. There's no def there's no defined points for those. So this would just be undefined. I can't remember the homework does that to you, so I wanted to do that to you once here. I don't think they would. We'll see. There's nothing in the negative three, so this is a trick question. Okay. So the one nice thing about section eight two is it comes back to lines. Uh, but instead of writing it as y, so, so what is the equation of the line from before? Y equals. So now we're just going to write it as f of x equals m x plus b. There's a bang. So some of the stuff is going to be old news, but some of it is going to be a little bit new. So for example, can, can you tell me one, one of these that's not linear, that 
And linear functions have to be able to be put like this. This one? This is fine. This is okay. Because the the real quick, real quick, on this one right here, what would m have to be? Because there's no x there, what would m have to be? Zero. Zero. And then b would be five. five. So that does follow this pattern. You just, it just has a slope of zero. So it's always five. It never goes up or down. It's just always five. But that's a good point. That's, that's the trick question in there. That's why equals five. Yeah, this is the same thing. Wherever you see f of x, you could just put a y back in, and it means the same thing. f of x is just a, a notation that takes the place of 